Prepare for glory! Glorious! 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 Glory last forever! What's up, guys? Welcome back. For more glorious, mate. And I've been thinking about doing a hell week. That's why we've got hell on right now. And I've been getting games for that hell week. And it's been going really, really, really stupidly well. In fact, I've not lost a single game for the hell week. And for those who don't know, I've not been subscribed for long enough. Usually what I do when I do a god week is I'll put the god in every role available in Smite. See how they get on. And occasionally I'll do like an arena or a 3v3 or you know something like that as well to join it. So you get a kind of an in-depth look at what the god can do when you put them in, you know, different roles and all that kind of good stuff. And then sometimes I would also I would also do like a little montage of the games that didn't quite make it, they were good, but you know, maybe not good enough. And just put some music behind it and boom. I think the very, very first God Week ever did was some would call the Monkey King. Back in the day when everyone thought he was terrible, I believe this was not too long after the Great Warrior now, so we're going back in time quite well. So yeah, decided decided to do Hell, like fuck it, go to Hell. The new skin's one of my favourite in all of Smite. The light stance looks fantastic from behind, not so much from the front. Kind of reminds me of a tranny and I keep bringing it up because I can't get the image out of my head. Card that's fantastic. Dark stance voice pack is really epic. So anyway, the idea for this video was is Hill maybe better than people think? Now obviously I think she's really good, right? I think she's really good. But a lot of people think she's underpowered or weak or in need of a buff or oh my god, the weakening curse at level one, I oh, do much, save me, high res, save me. You know? And do they really have a point? I don't think they do because I have no problem. In fact, like I said, won every game. I think it was like nine games of hell and I won them all. I did do bad in a couple of them, right? Not even bad, I'd done poorly at the start. Slightly, slightly. And pulled it back. Every every other game was a clean sweep. Even this game. Some would call. Started Red Pot. And I still killed him at the start, early game. Wukong early game with Bluestone and Red Pot. That's a disgustingly powerful start. Wukong's strength is his early game kind of poke potential with uh, with Bluestone. And then you combine that with Red Pot and people saying he'll really weak early game. That should be easy for him. But it was easy for me. Something she's not weak early game either. We all know she's strong late game. But I think she's strong early game. I think she's strong at all periods of the game. I think people exaggerate her, you know, alleged weakness. Because I think she's always strong, always good. So, let's just look at it. Why do people think she's weak? Right, that's what I was trying to get get my head around. You know what? Why would you think she's weak? She's so strong. She's got four abilities early game that can be spammed. I usually don't level the, the two. But when you eventually put a point in it, it's very useful, very good. Light stance and dark stance, you can't underestimate that buff. Or, yeah, the debuff, sorry. I mean, it kind of buffs you as well because it helps you do more damage, but you're actually debuffing the enemies, but it's the same idea. So people think she's weak because, oh, early curse, ah, too strong, right? So let's see you're in solo. And the enemy warrior, because it's most likely a warrior, gets early game curse. What can you do against that overwhelming power of the curse? Oh, I know, you can get early game sprint for free, which actually hard counters. It's not a soft counter, it's a hard counter. The sprint removes the slow and makes you go fast. It doesn't just kind of like even out. Like, it doesn't make you go fast, but the slow's still there, so you're just base speed. No, you go fast. So you can just walk away. You're, you're under no risk. Once you do get a point in your light stance uh, cleanse, your two, it doesn't remove the anti heal debuff, but it does remove the slow, and then you can use the heal, and then you'll get the speed buff, and again, you are free to run away completely counters that, it's kind of crazy. You say, oh, but what, what about the anti heal? Well, you're not going to die, you're not under any pressure, and it's not a full anti heal, so you still heal. It's not even a full anti heal. Even combined with Pestilence, it's still not 100% anti heal. And even if it was 100%, like, say, Odin, what you got to remember is 
Vor of Asepolis and the way Ant Heal works in this game. Ant Heal, again, we'll just use Owen's out, is 100%, but it doesn't, rem doesn't remove all of it, right? That's not what it means. It doesn't mean remove all. What it means is. What it means is. If you've got 125% heal, it takes away 100% of that, but leaves it 25%. So if you get the Rod of Asepolis, you'll always have a minimum of 25% heal, even inside the Odin like ring. Even with Pestilence. Uh, Hill's Light Stance gives her a buff in healing. I believe it's Light Stance anyway. Or she's got some sort of buff to healing, like inherent to her. So you'll always be healing for a little bit, right? And they would need full Odin ult, or they would need Weakening Curse, Beat a Stick, and Pestilence to just to kind of anti heal you down. There's a lot of aims to invest. And even then, even when people go all this anti heal, doesn't mean jack shit unless they can actually kill you. Which is not as easy as you would, you know, think or have people would have you believe. Right, there's a clip from one of my old intros where an Osiris with who's got the one hundred percent anti heal ult ults me, uses I think it's a frostbite and pestilence, uses his weakening curse, and I still kill him. Right, and I'm not like miles ahead of him or anything, I still kill him. Because I've built properly. So the anti heal excuse is completely fucking mute. There is no excuse there. If you're getting affected by that, it's because you're choosing to build stupidly. And that leads me to the next point. Are people just building our fucking stupidly? Oh, well, she's a mage, so you build full power. Uh, yeah, see, the subcategories within the mage class, like every other class, you do not build our full full squish. You build a full squish, yeah, she's going to suck, but that's not because she sucks, it's because your build sucks and you're bad and you feel bad. That That's it. You don't build a full squish. Right? If, as long as you don't build a full squish, you're not going to die. Well, you will die, but you're going to die easily and stupidly. And people may say, oh, but you, but you need to build her for full burst because her heal scales so lowly now, it's only 30%. No, 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 see, you don't build full power because it scales to 30%. You go off the base and only get high value items because it scales to 30%. You work with it. You don't try to make 30% somehow significant. It's never going to be significant unless you want to build stupidly. And as I've already said, don't build stupidly. Right? In fact, let's look at it. Our heal, our heal heals at 30%, right? In the late game, full build with my build, which is kind of well balanced, I heal for about over 300, 6 slot, right? But even, let's say, you heal for 200, which is a lot lower, so I'm actually in your favour here. I see you only heal for 200. 30% of whatever power you've got 30%. To get up to 300, you would need to have over 100 scaling points, which means the actual item would need to have 300 power. No item does that. None. Right? So let's say you just want to try and get it to 250 from 200 at 30%. You would need over 150 power to do that. Over 150 power just to get that heal up 50 Fucking 50. Rod of Asepolis. Boost by 25% for everyone, all forms of healing. That would give you an extra 50 healing on the 200. Because it boosted by 25%. Right? And it also offers some power to boost it further. So when you compare Rod of Asepolis to actual just raw power items, Rod of Asepolis is actually better because you also get the health and the movement speed. Movement speed's invaluable because Hell's base speed's actually fucking rotten. So, buying that is actually good. People used to say it was bad because you would get more healing from power, but that's actually not true. Right now, with 30% scaling, that item, I think, unless very, very specific full squish builds, which as we've already talked about is very bad, no item will give you as much boosted healing as Rod of Asepolis would. Because it comes with 75 power, which isn't terrible. And the, the big boost, the... 25% boost and then you still get the health and movement speed on top of that. These things are all really really stupidly good. So it's a really good item. Right and it's really valuable because you get health when our base health is quite low. You get movement speed and our movement speed is quite low. So these are all things that buffs are up. I'm not going to say it's core but I think it's very good and I pretty much always get it. So I guess in a way it's core but you don't need to get it right. I'm just saying it's very good and worthwhile looking into. So you don't want to build a full Full squish, she skills poorly. So you just want to get valuable core items for sort of a midliner, because that's what you are, you're a midliner. You can tank, right? And it's fine. 
but you also deal damage. Your base damage is actually disgusting. I think it's about 300, maybe more, on your Dark Stance 3, which is really good for a big AoE. And you've got the CC cleanse, which is, like, it's, it's almost beads in a kit. So, again, it's pretty good. You've got, basically, a lot of good things in your kit. You don't have the, rah, I'm a burst out, boom. You know, you don't have the, I'm a monster. You don't have anything like that. But you're quite strong, and you, you know, have a lot. And you can box pretty much anyone. Like, this Artemis is actually further ahead than me. She's got a red buff, and I just chased away a Ratatasker with speed buff. And if I had landed my Dark Stance 1 if I wasn't a total scrub, she'd have died. Or if I had abilities up from chasing her with a rat, she'd have died. And she was fed with red buff. You can just see the kind of raw damage. You can see the cleanse. You can see the power. Like, if she didn't sprint to run away, I'd kill her. I don't want to waste sprint chasing her, obviously. But you can see the power. I absolutely completely dumpstered the art, forced her ultimate, and her sprint for nothing. How strong will you build her properly? Right now, I've got a kind of mid mid lane build, it's more power focused, but when you look at it, the yes is power items, but they all do something else that are viable. Rod for the single most viable power item, like it just gives you the most raw power per item. Chrono's Pendant for the CDR and MP5. CDR obviously very important for someone who's kind of going off their base damage. Pen Boots to deal more damage, Pen obviously good. Breastplate again, protection so I can be the mid laner, but also for the CDR, caps me out. Rod of Acepolis for the health, the movement speed, and the boosted healing. Right, these are all very viable, very kind of powerful aim combinations that you kind of want. And you don't even need any more pen from there because your debuffs are already strong enough. Yeah, you can get upset if you want to and play with the tanks and try and kill them, right? You, you can get upset and do that. But I usually just don't. I usually get another defense item, whatever I need. You know? That's kind of the... That's kind of the strength of hell. Your base is pretty good, your scaling's pretty poor. Don't try and force it to be a mid mage. Don't try and force it to be full burst. It's not gonna work, right? Don't force it. It's not gonna work. Build her for what she is, and she'll do well. So, yeah. In fact, like I said, I won every game, right? When I was in the conquest. Fair enough, a lot of times the enemies outright sucked. It's my matchmaking, you know, it's soapy. The two hardest games. I had were actually it was three hard games. There was one where I actually at one point and I kid you not, I was zero seven two. I know that's crazy. Me zero seven two. I ended up ending the game with the highest kill participation, you know. What can I say? I turned that around. It was pretty good. But what happened is I ended up dying at level one against a Ratatasker solo because he had full well it's his passive, the super boots. Because he gets a better version of boots basically. But I forgot the fact he can buy it from base. I didn't expect him to have it at fucking level 1 or 2 or whatever it was. Basically, started with tier 2 of his boots, bought the tier 3 when he was out in lane. And it didn't even occur to me that he could have done that. It's like, oh shit, he's actually got full boots. And I died. And then he killed me again because I tried to kill him. And I would have got it, but the 3's animation took far too long to complete. And he kind of, like, you know, he, he kind of, he kind of just barely killed me. If I had landed at 3, I'd have stopped the snowball. But the animation didn't complete in time and I died. And then he snowballed quite hard. I went and got two kills for the jungle because they were struggling to get kills. And mid 072, like I said, then I ended up getting fucked by their jungler and yeah, it went bad. But I completely turned it around and, you know, once I caught him gold a little bit, the Ratatasker couldn't touch me. Like, he built perfect. You know, Titans, Beat Stick, you know, the full shebang, I think, of Bloodforge. And I think even a Urchin. But he still couldn't touch me in a 1v1. Once it got to a certain point, he was still ahead of me in items by like a full item. But it didn't matter. I got to that point where, yeah, I'm too strong now. I do too much. With too much damage, too much heals, you can't touch this. You die. And he was forced to run away a lot of times. Or I would actually just outright kill him. And I turned the game around. Then another game I was up against the Sun Wukong. I think it was actually Zashu, who was a, I think he's a former SPL player. And he got a first kill on me as well. Nice like, only one though. On Sun Wukong. And again, because I tried to fight him. I was winning, and then I was winning and died because Sun Wukong's passive was pretty good. I hear random crits, pretty nice. Yeah. But he got the slight lead. But almost immediately, I think once we were both at 3 items, so he was at 3.5, he couldn't touch me. Right, he just couldn't touch me. Even at 2 items, I was under no pressure. Pembo's breastplate, y y game's over. He goes, boy, it's a bye. Pestilence, but it doesn't matter. At, at that point alone, I still beat him. Right, we do about the same damage to each other, but he's got 
more health than me, but I've got heals. That's it, you know. I win that trade. Obviously, Pestilence gives a bit more protections than Breastplate, but I get pain off Pen Boots, he doesn't get that, so the damage works out kind of similar. But again, I've got heals, he doesn't. And I've got CDR, he doesn't. And eventually, only one thing can happen, I win. So yeah, I, I think Kill is actually a lot stronger people give it credit for. I think as long as you don't build full burst, you build a little bit of tankiness, except the fact that you're a mid laner. Don't try and b get your heals up. You don't even need to be a fucking healer. How many times have you seen me play Hell in the past where it's just like, yeah, come fight me? Like, I don't fucking care about healing. Like, buy Weakening Curse, buy the Beat Stick, buy the Pestilence. Yeah, I don't heal, but I still do lots of damage. As long as you build properly. If you build full squish, you deserve to die. That's just it. You deserve it. Because it's stupid, bad, and doesn't work for kit. When you look at the numbers, when you look at the scaling, when you look at the base, it tells you how to build her. So yeah, still look out for Hell Week, or at least a couple of games of Hell, at the very least. So guys, hope you all enjoy this. Tell me if you agree or not, and all that good shit, or if you disagree. And I'll see you all next time.